Hi everyone, welcome to church. I'm Katie Yons and I'm the pastor at St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Verona, New York. Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. Please check out our announcements and if you're watching live, connect with others in the chat or the comments. You can also check out stpetersverona.org to connect with us and we would love to hear from you. And now I invite you to gather your hearts and your minds for worship. Hello everyone, it's great to see you today. I'm Pastor Katie Yons from St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Verona, New York. This worship service is for May 23rd, 2021, the day of Pentecost. Now today is the day when we remember Jesus sending the Holy Spirit on the early church and empowering them for mission. We'll hear that story as part of our service today. 
And Pentecost is often called the birthday of the church for just that reason. Now, later in this service, we will be sharing the meal of Holy Communion. So you'll want to make sure that you have bread or a cracker and wine or juice ready to go for that. And we'll also start by remembering our baptism today, the last time that we're going to do that for a while. So you may want to have a little bit of water with you, maybe a little cup or a bowl of water to help you remember your baptism. Although if you don't or you can't get those things, that's fine. You don't need them. It just helps. Okay, everyone, thank you. Thank you for joining us for worship today. And thank you, most of all, for being the church, no matter where you are. At this conclusion of the Easter season, we begin by giving thanks for baptism. I know you can't see it, but I'm standing here in front of our baptismal font. And when I dip my hand in the water and make the sign of the cross, you are invited to do the same. On this day of Pentecost, the church is born and reborn, just as we are reborn in these waters of baptism. And like these waters, the Holy Spirit is poured out and sends us out together alive with new life. God, we pray that your spirit would set us free from the prisons of pettiness, jealousy, and greed. Set us free to be your church. We are freed to free others. We are forgiven to forgive others. We are loved to love others. You call us to be the church, and you send us to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, heal the sick, and to be alleluias even when there is no music. Fill us with your spirit. Make us again into your body for the world. Amen. In the Pentecost story, it talks about the Holy Spirit sounding like a mighty rush of wind. And so our gathering hymn today is God of Tempest, God of Whirlwind. So let's go ahead and sing along with Scott.
Thank you, Scott. And now let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth and give us language to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, Carrie Comfort will bring us our readings for today. Morning. Our first reading is from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of the Pentecost came, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And when it filled the entire house where they were sitting, divided tongues as if of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Gal Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya, and belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews, Postolites, Cretans, and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing among the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour all out all of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams even upon my slaves both men and women in those days I will pour out my spirit and I shall prophesy and I will show importance in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 22 through 27. 
Paul writes, We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies, for in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what the mind of the Spirit. But because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God, word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Carrie. And now the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th and 16th chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me about righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Okay, it is time for the children's message. So hello, kids. I hope you're out there and I hope you are doing well and staying safe. Today is a really important day for the church because it is the church's birthday. Did you know that the church has a birthday? Now, I don't just mean our church like St. Peter's. I mean the whole church everywhere in the whole world. So the church's birthday is Pentecost, and we just heard the story a little bit ago. We heard Miss Carrie read the story of how the church was born. The Holy Spirit came down on all these believers, and they all started to speak different languages and tell people from all over the world about Jesus. And the Spirit helped them speak all these different languages so that everyone else could understand about Jesus. They could understand why he was special. Now, in the story of Pentecost, it says that when the Holy Spirit came down, it sounded like the rush of a mighty wind, like a big storm coming. It was probably really loud. And just like a storm, it might have been a little scary. 
but it also might have been kind of exciting. It also says that the Holy Spirit looked like fire, and fire can also be scary, but also sometimes a little exciting. So that means that anything that has to do with wind and fire can remind us of this day and remind us of the Holy Spirit and remind us of the birthday of the church. I was digging around a little bit in my office, and there are, here's a few things that I found to help us think about that. I found a big, huge pinwheel. Pretty cool, huh? Pinwheels are pretty, of course, but you notice they only move They only move when wind is at work. And did you know, you know, we all have a little bit of wind in us. When we blow, right, that's like a little bit of wind. Now, if this is outside, it would probably be going a lot faster and a lot longer. But with my little bit of wind there, it just goes a little bit like that. I found some other stuff, too. Let's see here. I found, uh oh, that fell over. Oh, well. I found bubbles. I found bubbles. Now let's see if I can get this the wand out because it's kind of down in there. Okay, bubbles are also pretty, you know, but they you know they start out as liquid in the jar. Oop, liquid dripping onto the carpet. Bubbles are also messy, yes, <laughs> but bubbles are the same kind of thing. When they start out not as bubbles, they only turn into bubbles when we. Right? When we blow into them, when we use our wind, that is when they turn into bubbles. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. Now, what are, there are probably some other things that you can think of, too, that work like this, too. Things that need wind in order to work, right? Um, how about kites? You know? A kite is not going to fly very far if there's no wind. How about... Windmills. You've seen windmills going and the blades turning. Well, guess what? When the wind's not blowing, those, those things are not turning. How about, mm, how about birds? Birds flying in the sky, right? Especially birds like hawks and eagles that kind of just soar without really flapping their wings. They need the wind in order to do that. Um, how about airplanes? or hot air balloons. Those both have things that help the wind. They have engines or they have you know, burners to, to have hot air, but they ne still need the wind. That they, don't, you know, they have to know about the wind in order to work successfully. Um, so maybe the next time that you are riding in the car or maybe next time you're out in nature, pay attention to the wind. See if you can feel the wind. See if you can see what the wind is doing. See if you can see some of these things that only work when they have wind. Because there's a, there's a whole bunch of things like this, probably a lot more that I didn't even think of here. So wind is something that we can't see, but it really can do a whole bunch of amazing things. And the spirit is the same way. We can't see the spirit, but it helps us to do all of these things that we do and all of these things that the church does. And that, that's kind of, you know, that's part of the way God works. God, the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity, part of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's part of God. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool that something, even just going outside and feeling the wind, can remind us of that part of God. All right. Now, next Sunday is Trinity Sunday, so we'll hear more about the, all the parts of the Trinity and how they work together. But for today, we're just uh, focusing on the Spirit. So anyway, I would love to hear what you, else you see out in the world, out in nature or elsewhere, whatever, anything you see that needs wind to work. I would love to hear what you, what you come up with, what you find. All right, let's go ahead and pray. You can repeat after me. Dear Holy Spirit, thank you for being with us. Thank you for starting the church. Fill us and help us follow you. Help us be moved by your wind. Amen. All right, we continue with our hymn of the day, Spirit of Gentleness. Let's sing along with Scott.
Thank you, Scott. And now let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all of our hearts 
be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It all started with a penny. I was talking recently to our own Kathy Haldenwang, and she was sharing with me a story of something that happened to her recently. It was all about an unusual charge that showed up on her bank statement for one penny. That's all, not millions of dollars, just a strange one penny charge from some, an All Saints church somewhere for a penny. Well, obviously, Kathy was like, uh, this isn't right. This sounds fishy. So she called the bank, and the bank said, well, we don't know anything about this. And they said that she would have to contact All Saints Church directly to try and get them to reverse the charge. So that's exactly what she did. She called the phone number listed for All Saints on the bank statement. And I'm sure she was preparing herself for one of those conversations you really don't want to have either a fight or a struggle or, you know, something that just wasn't pleasant or, you know, facing a scam even fishier than it appeared at first, right? You're just preparing yourself for all these things. But instead, a very nice woman pleasantly answered the phone. All Saints Church, how can I help you? Didn't sound like a scam. And Kathy started explaining about the one cent charge. And the woman said, stop. Don't go any further. I know exactly what you're going to say. Turns out that All Saints, a Catholic parish in Puyallup, Washington, my home state of all places, wow, had been hacked. All Saints Church had been hacked. And the hackers used the church's identity to initiate fraudulent charges against thousands of people all over the world chosen at random. And so the secretary assured Kathy that they were on top of this. The hackers did not have any of her personal information, and things were in the process of being resolved. Phew. But the surprising part is when Kathy said, oh, I'm really sorry that you have to go through all this headache. And the woman said, oh, actually, it hasn't been that bad. I've heard from thousands of people all over the world most people have been very nice about it and very understanding. In fact, I have some new friends now in places that I'd only heard about before. When you stop to think that it all started with a penny and the headache of a fraudulent bank charge and a bunch of hackers trying to do something nefarious and somehow it became a new opportunity for making friends around the world and connecting with people different from you. Wow, well, that transformation sounds like a minor miracle to me, an everyday miracle. In fact, it sounds like the work of the Holy Spirit. In the story of Pentecost in our Acts reading, we heard about how the Holy Spirit took something that divided people and emphasized their differences and transformed it into a sign of their unity. Throughout centuries of being a conquered people, the Jewish people had been scattered all over the Mediterranean, sometimes forcibly, right? Sometimes taken into exile, um, sometimes taken away as captives, um, sometimes because they really didn't have any other choice. So they, uh, there were Jews living all over the Mediterranean at that time. And they shared a religious tradition but not a language. Or if they did share a language, it was Greek, which was the language of their conquerors a couple of centuries ago. The setup for the Pentecost story is that all of these people have come back to Jerusalem to celebrate this big holiday. And different languages would have been heard all over the city. It would have been exciting, but also probably a little disorienting for people. And yet, the Holy Spirit takes language, this thing that reminds them of their painful history, and transforms it into something that connects them, instead of something that divides them, something that brings up the pain of the past. Paul describes a similar transformation in our reading from Romans today. 
We do not know how to pray as we ought, he writes. But that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. He describes how we are filled with groans while we wait for adoption, for redemption, for God to come and put all things right. And these groans, for us, they could take the shape of wordless cries or screams or sobs, even profanity, destructive behavior, all sorts of things. These groans come from beholding the world with the deep conviction that this is not what God intended, that this is not how things should be. I don't think we have to look very far to see that. I think there are ample examples of that every day, of how this world is not what God intended and how that causes us to groan. Some things that happen to us in life are just beyond words. Some pain, some grief, some trauma, some of the most wounding things we can experience in life take away our words and leave us with only groans. I kind of think that hackers impersonating a church to, in order to try and steal money from people is a great example of something that makes us groan. Not just from the injustice or the hassle, but this, it's a visible and real sign that our world is pretty messed up and that sin is real. Granted, there are much, much huger things, much, you know, much bigger things, that, bigger ways that we see sin evident in our world, but this is one as well. And then, on the flip side of that whole story, there's that phone ringing with callers from all over the world. And if I were the person answering those calls, I think I would be filled with dread. Every time the phone rang, I would be preparing myself. Is this person going to scream at me for something I didn't do? We are both the victims here. Are they going to listen to me? Will they understand? Will they forgive? I think we all have those worries, those questions, those concerns, when something is not as it should be and people want to blame you. So yeah, I think the Holy Spirit is able to take some pretty horrible raw material, in this case, an illegal act trying to take advantage of people and right relationships are just considered to be collateral damage. And the Holy Spirit takes all that mess, all of that junk, and turns it into some kind of redeeming interaction, right? Something that actually fosters relationship and understanding, something that crosses and bridges continents and oceans and brings things closer together in a way. Who could do that if not the Spirit? Paul talks about the whole creation groaning because of its labor pains. And not only creation, but us as well. That may well be, but I think most of the time we don't realize that we are in labor. We mistake the labor pains for something else. We blame someone else. We blame ourselves. We get angry at God or the world or the system or the government or whatever, or something else. We get angry at someone else for causing pain and suffering. And we just want it to all go away and stop hurting. Does that sound familiar to you? It's not until after the Spirit has done its work that we realize that those pains were actually labor pains, that after it was all over, something new and unexpected was born. Because the Spirit doesn't wait for us to understand. The Spirit doesn't wait for us to grant permission. The Spirit doesn't wait for us to welcome it in. The Holy Spirit understands far better than we do when the time has come. 
It knows when new things are waiting in the wings and it's time for them to make their entrance. That's how the transformation happens. That's how our pain goes from being infuriatingly meaningless to having meaning. When our pain has greater meaning, it changes everything. When it, our pain actually means something, it helps us to bear it. It helps us to have hope that it will end, that there's a reason for it. That's how our groans, our shouts, our cries are changed into prayers of hope when we could actually, usually in retrospect, see the meaning. And it's not that God just whoop, fixes everything in one fell swoop, but that through these little transformations, these little Pentecosts, these outpourings of the Spirit, that the elements and experiences of our world that seem to be nothing but sin now become occasions for reconciliation, for rebuilding, for healing. This is the greater promise of Pentecost, that the Holy Spirit was not just poured out once and for all in a spectacular fashion with fire and wind, right, to sort of kickstart the church, but that God continues to pour out that same Holy Spirit on us in our own griefs and groans, pouring it onto our world of pain Maybe not with fireworks or the rush of wind, but in a very ordinary way. I know that right now, our world, uh, at least here in the United States, we are starting to get excited about seeing some visible signs of leaving the pandemic behind. But we cannot deny that this past year has held a lot of pain. You see it in the, the short temper that seems to be simmering under the surface. You see it in the anger, the frustration, the groans that are still very much present in our world. But even now, even now as we work through these labor pains, that same Holy Spirit is being poured out on us to heal to midwife new life, to be our advocate and our comforter and our guide, both now and every day that we live. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue now with the prayers led by Deb Rafty. If you have prayer concerns to share, I invite you to share them in the chat window or the comments. Good morning. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. In our conference, we pray for St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Liverpool and their pastor, Deb Stein. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of life, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things both great and small. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speaking different languages pro proclaim and heard together your deeds of power. Fill the leaders of nations with your Holy Spirit so that they exercise your gracious will in the lives of people. Hear us, O oh God, 
your mercy is great. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the size of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore to wholeness all who are in need this day. Especially, we pray for COVID vaccination efforts in our nation and around the world, and for nations like India struggling with a massive surge of infections. For the work of strategic mission planning at St. Peter's for our future. To those dealing with extreme weather events around the world. For Kelly and Dave, daughter and son-in-law of Pastor Ricky and Deanna Fuller and their two children after a house fire. For those who need healing, including Anna, Jackie, Bill, Shirley, Sean, Chet, Gil, Deb, Janet, Colleen, Jack, John, Sherry, Chris, Robin, Henry, Margarita, Mary, Emma, Amy, and Paul. For those fighting cancer, including Ricky, Alan, Nancy, Sharon, Marlon, Abe, Steve, Don, Joe, Renee, Kensley, Bonnie, Abby, Chris, Mary, and Lisa. For all those who have tested positive for COVID-19 in their families, including baby Thomas, Vivian, Kylie, Emily, Caitlin, Isaiah, Kelly, and all those continuing to recover from its long-term effects, including Jackie, Pastor Ejaz, Wes, and the Cardinal family. We pray for good test results for Kathy, for peace and comfort for the Rogowski family after Vince's passing on May 11th, Esther and her family, John and his family, and Maureen and her family. For those who need strength and guidance, including Christopher, Andrea, including Christopher, Andrea, and Craig, Carol, Missy, Lisa, and Evan. For Brent, John, Eddie, Kevin, Jenna, Steve, and all enforcement officers, first responders, and healthcare professionals, that they would be safe from physical harm as they seek to protect us. For those who are living or staying in hospitals, nursing homes, and assisted living facilities, including Phil, Ralph, Wes, Max, and Doris. For those escaping domestic violence and toxic relationships. For those living with loneliness, anxiety, mental illness, addiction, or other issues magnified by isolation and stress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of love, fill this congregation of St. Peter's with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of hope, those who have died in you raise their eternal song of praise. We give you thanks for the many gifts of your people and rejoice in the witness of your saints. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Deb. And we move now to the peace. May the peace of our risen Lord be with you always and also with you. I invite you now to share the peace in the chat window or the comments. Share peace with those who are there with you in your home. Send a text or an email to someone or share on social media a word of Christ's peace.
peace be to everyone commenting on YouTube and Facebook, but even if you're not commenting, peace be with you today. Okay, everyone, it's time for communion. So this is the time you'll want to bring out your bread or cracker and your wine or your juice, and you are invited to eat and drink along with me after the Lord's Prayer. In this simple meal of bread and wine, our Lord Jesus gives us his very self, his body and his blood. And we don't need to worry ourselves with providing food and drink that is fancy enough for this meal. Jesus comes to us through whatever we have and wherever we are as a reminder that all things are united and made whole in him and that we are joined together as his body despite our physical distance. When we come to this table, this table that is not ours, but God's, we eat with those who have come before and those who will come after us, those right here and those everywhere, those joining us online and those joining us in the pews this morning. And together, we remember and proclaim that on the night before the cross, the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ given for you. If there's a group of you there, I invite you to say that to each other as you pass the bread. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Again, if there's a group of you there, I invite you to say that to each other as you pass the cups. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness into our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now remember, if you have leftovers after communion, after worship, go ahead and eat and drink whatever is left. And if you can't do that, well, maybe you can break the bread into crumbs to feed the birds and use the wine or the juice to water a tree or something like that. Um, return it to the earth from which it came. That's the idea, rather than putting it in the garbage or putting it down the drain. And now, as you go forth from this worship service, may the wind of the Spirit startle your senses and blow through your life. May the fire of the Spirit scorch your complacency and light your way. 
and may the blessing of the Holy One, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, rest with you now and forevermore. Amen. Our sending hymn will be Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling. Let's sing with Scott. Thank you again for joining us today for worship. We're so glad that you did. Everyone, please be well and be safe. We care about you, so please do what you need to do to help us all beat this virus together, whether that's wearing your mask, washing your hands, getting your vaccine, or a combination of all of those. We can do this together. Thank you to everyone who helped to lead worship today. Carrie Comfort, Deb Rafty, Scott Stewart, and Russ Brookins. And now if you were spiritually fed by this worship service, then please consider doing two things. First of all, you can respond to God's gift with a gift of your own. If you already have a church home that you support, I invite you to make a donation there. And if you don't, and you'd like to be part of what we are doing at St. Peter's, that is great. Just go to our website, stpetersverona.org, at the top, click on giving, and then on the yellow button that says donate via PayPal. 
Of course, there's always the mail as well, and our mailing address is also on that page. Thank you, and I want to say a special thank you to all of our members and friends who have continued to give faithfully and contribute to the life of St. Peter's. We're very grateful for each and every one of you. The second thing that you can do is connect with us. Again, at stpetersverona.org, under I'm new here, click on Stay Connected to sign up for our various communications with the checkboxes. That way, you won't miss anything that we're up to. On Facebook, you can follow us and like us. For the latest updates, live posts, Wednesday night prayer services, and daily prayers, please make sure to visit our Facebook page directly. On YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel and then click the bell that pops up right there to get notifications whenever we post a new video. And on both platforms, you can like this video by giving us a thumbs up and leave a comment to let us know that you were here. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.